This right here is the Godox SAP projection attachment. It's not what this video is about, but we got to start here. This is the Godox SA17. It is an adapter that allows you to take this SAP, which was originally designed for the Godox S30, and attach this same thing to any Bowens mount light. So Bowens mount LEDs, such as the Godox VL300, the UL series, the SL series, or the FV series of lighting. It does its intended purpose. It allows you to shape light precisely. You have control with various optics you have an iris control, you can put gobos in to get, create unique patterns of light, and there's also a little kit that gives you some neutral density filters as well as things like flags so that you can cut the light. So it gives you a lot of control, but it's not without its inadequacies. One of the big things that's kind of annoying about this is that these flags are loose, right? They, once you get them in their place, They'll hopefully be in position, but it's very easy for them to get jostled and knocked out completely. Another issue with it is that this is a lot of weight for the design of these Bowens lights. It's a lot of weight on the front, a lot of leverage. So it's very easy, even if you have them tightened down, for this to just sag over time. And the last thing is that it's just not a very tight setup. You can see this is loose and even if we put the FV light straight upright, you can see there's a little bit of sag. This would be perfectly aligned, and this is not, which just leads to a little bit more light loss. So, it was time for Godox to upgrade their projection options for their LED lighting, and that's where we have this today, the VSA 19K Spotlight Kit. This right here is the VSA kit, and this right up front here is the 19K part. This is the 19 degree spotlight attachment, but there are two other spotlight attachments as well that just give you greater control in concentrating light. This is improved in a ton of ways over the SAP. First off, it's Bowens natively, so there is no adapter necessary for it to work. Second, the flags, really improved because they can't fall out. They can still get knocked out of place, but there's no way that they get pulled out. They are connected into the device, which just allows you to keep them all in place, stay organized better. The yoke is in a much better position to allow for mounting the large Bowens lights. So I've put the no lead 600 on here. I've put the VL300 on here. You can see I can loosen this completely and it's fairly balanced. It is sagging a little bit, but if I remove this yoke, then it's going to be even more properly balanced. This yoke is the beefiest yoke that's been designed yet. Uh, it's also what you would find on the no lead 600, but basically it's a step up from the yoke that you would find on lights like the FV series, as well as the SL series. So this yoke just can handle more weight, which just allows this really large setup to be balanced really well. So with this spotlight attachment, we can create a very tight pattern of light with a crisp edge. And we can refine that by adjusting the spotlight attachment. You can see as I zoom it out, it gets a little bit smaller. As I zoom it in, it gets larger. But there's also more levels of control than that. So we have various accessories that we can slide into this. This is the iris control. By tilting it left and right, we open or close down the iris. So we just slide this forward and we can drop this iris in here. And this is the resulting change in the light as we change the iris. Now we also have four flags on every side. It's a little weird to get used to using because whatever you adjust is opposite on the light. So if we wanted to create a little square there, we could bring them all in a little bit. And instead of a circle, we got a square. Or we can narrow them in and create more of a slashing effect. And again, you can always come back to this front optic and modify that to change the size of it. Now the kit also includes this piece, which allows you to put gels right in here up front. And in fact, there's space for two sets of gels if you wanna use two. And there's a specific set of gels for this to make sure that it can handle the heat of the spotlight attachment because even just standing right in front of it, I can feel the warmth of it and our light isn't even that powerful. Speaking of power, one thing that I was a little upset by is that the max power 
that is recommended for using this is 300 watts, which means you can't max out the NOLED 600 with this. I do wish this thing were able to accommodate their flagship LED, especially since that just came out. These came out at almost the exact same time, but I suppose you can just turn down the NOLED 600 to 50% power. Now, of course, this kit includes gobos as well. If you don't know, a gobo is just short for go between, something that goes between the light source and where that light ends up. Now I have to say, when that SAP kit came out, one of the things I said was that most of the gobos were cheesy. Um, they just weren't patterns that I would typically use or they just didn't make sense. But this kit actually has a lot of shapes that I would use, right? We've got a lot of ways to just cut light in a very unique, interesting way. We've got these starbursts, we've got slashes, but just a lot more. Here's the, here's the cheesy ones I was talking about. We've got a moon, we've got stars, got a single star. To me, those ones don't have much value. But this one, there are gobos available that create interesting patterns of light, such as this one, just a way to cut up the light and add some texture to it as opposed to just using all one even power of light. To use a gobo, all you have to do is put it in the gobo holder, slides down in there, and then you put it right in front of the section ahead of the flags. Push it all the way down, and boom, you will get the gobo's effect. Now the cool thing about the position there is you can also use it while using the iris control. The iris control can slot right in front of it, and we can cut our gobo. And because the flags are always there, we can also cut the gobo using the flags. So the three different pieces, the gobos, the iris control, and the flags just have a lot more harmony than on the previous SAP kit. Now the thing about using focused light is as you move it, you're changing the distance at which it's focused, so now you have to refocus it. As you can see, because we have it at such a steep angle here, the front of it is out of focus, the kind of back third of it is in focus, and then just at the edge, it starts falling out of focus again. It's just like a subject. So your distance really matters here, and every time you change the distance or change the angle, you're going to have to give it a different focus position. The question that always comes up when using a kit like this is, but will it work with flash? It's designed and optimized for LED. Anything LED with the Bowens mount will work with this. FV series, UL series, SL series, VL series, and the NOLED M600. Those are all gonna work with this. Now, when it comes to flash, basically you are limited by this rear element back here. If the flash will fit in here, you can use it. So 8200 with its bare bulb, we can put that in here. We can lock it down. So you can see we're getting the pattern. It's still focused. Everything about it looks good. So we can use flash with this. It's just a matter of will it fit. 8200 Fresnel head will fit. H200 round head will fit. Uh, the 8300 Pro will fit because that's got a very short bare bulb. Godox 8400 Pro, unfortunately, does not fit. If you look from the side, our flash tube is bumping into the rear glass element back there well before we ever get the Bowens mount in. So that's just not happening, which also means 600 Pro, uh, 8200 Pro, those aren't gonna work either. The 600, the Godox 8600, I unfortunately do not have one anymore. So I can't test and the 8600 bulb is more recessed. So possibly, but I'm still gonna guess no, just based on how far off the 8400 Pro seems. And I will say using flash with this type of system is very cumbersome because you don't have a constant light to focus. You don't have a constant light to make sure your gobo is aligned well or to cut the light. So it's actually far easier if you're using this with LED. And honestly, this makes the FV150 or FV200, the FV series of flashes really work well with a system like this because you get the LED light to focus everything and, and dial it all in, and then you have the 400% overcharge feature to actually light it. So provided you're not trying to freeze action because this is not the best choice for freezing action with flash, 
Uh, the VSA 19K kit, spotlight attachment kit, is gonna be a really good option with this FE series of lighting. One thing to know about the Gobos is that if you've had them in here with 150 watts or 200 watts or 300 watts, if you've had them in there for a while, when you take it out, it is going to be quite hot. That's why you've got this rubber at the top here to help protect you. But this whole plate, as well as the Gobo itself, they're all gonna be quite hot when you take them out. The Gobo size is just shy of 86 millimeters, so if you are looking at some alternative Gobos to get in there, as long as they are 86 millimeters, then they're gonna fit inside here and you'll be able to use them with this system. So overall, I think that this is a much better system than the original SAP system and the SA-17. It's just all one piece, it's way more heavy duty. Obviously that comes with a price tag. This plus its lens as well as like the kit of accessories is gonna set you back about $449. And then if you want additional optics, that's gonna be additional money as well. So definitely for people who are serious about cutting light, who are often using this type of system, I think it's way more applicable to people who are focused on video projects where they're often lighting backgrounds and creating those slash patterns or using gobos to cut light. But it is nice to know that there's flash potential as well. However, if you are a strobist, at this point we're on like three years where the SAP has been out and we still don't have a means of attaching that to all the flash. I don't know if it's ever gonna come. So I don't know that there's ever going to be a uh, projection system that is designed for all the Godox Flash products, all the Go Godox Bowens mount products. So at this point, if you're interested in optical snoots for Flash, then I think you just gotta look at other brands. All right, if you guys have any questions about the VSA spotlight attachment, let me know in the comments below. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did, subscribe if you wanna see more, and I'll catch you in the next one.